Hey friends, today we are going to take a look at some nonfiction text structures. A text structure is a way that the author has written or organized their thoughts and ideas for us. We are going to take a look at these five different types of text features. Description, order and sequence, cause and effect, compare and contrast, and problem and solution. Let's take a look at what each one of these means while we're reading a nonfiction text. The first type of text feature you might come across when reading a nonfiction text is a description. Here, a description gives you a description or it describes or gives characteristics of a person, place, or thing. Therefore, it gives a picture in your mind of what the author is trying to tell you. For an example, the author might say, the characteristics of a Labrador Retriever specifically include kind, gentle, and intelligent. Now, I have a picture in my mind of a Labrador Retriever, either a puppy or a grown dog, and that dog is kind, gentle, and intelligent, giving me more of a description of what a Labrador Retriever is like. Some of the words that you might find when looking for a description are such as, for example, for instance, in addition, also, and specifically. Those are some words that show some description. The next text structure is sequence and order. These are events that happen in a certain order. One of the examples I like to use is with peanut butter and jelly. Think about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You have to do things in a certain order, right? So let's take a look at my sentence. Here it says, first I put peanut butter on the bread, then jelly. In the end, I put both pieces of bread together. Does that give you a picture in your mind of what you would have to do step by step? Yes. So sequence and order is kind of like following a recipe or following directions. Things that must happen in a specific order is called sequence and order. Some of the look for words include the words before, in the beginning, to start, first, next, during, after, then, finally, last, in the middle, and in the end. A lot of us use these words in our informative writing. The next type of text structure we're going to talk about is cause and effect. Cause and effect is what happened and why did it happen. What caused something or this major event to happen? I'm going to use this example about food. Since I was so hungry, I ate my lunch early. So the effect was I ate my lunch early. But what caused me to eat my lunch early? Yeah, I was so hungry. So one thing has to happen before another thing or the effect to happen, right? So me being hungry caused me to eat my lunch early. And some of the words you might see are since, because, if, due to, as a result, causes, leads to, therefore. Some of the words you might see when an author is talking about cause and effect. The next one we're pretty familiar with, I believe, and that's comparing and contrasting. What is being compared in the text? How are they alike and how might they be different? We compare and contrast things all the time, whether it be in science or math, we are always comparing and contrasting things. Therefore, for my example, I have apples are red, unlike oranges that are orange. So ask yourself here, did I compare or did I contrast the fruits? I contrasted the fruits. Comparing would be how things are alike and contrasting is how they are different. So here I'm telling you that apples are the color red, unlike oranges that are the color orange. 
Here are some words that you might see when an author uses compare and contrast. They might use words such as similar, same, alike, both, as well as, for comparing. And then for contrasting, they might use the words unlike, as opposed to, on the other hand, in contrast, or instead. And I'm sure there's a few other ones that authors might throw in there too, so be on the lookout. Our last type of text structure that an author might use when giving us an informational text is problem and solution. We are very familiar with problem and solution type of text, mostly in nonfiction and fictional stories that we can either relate to where there's a plot, there's a series of events that happen, and then we have to identify what happened and why or how did that happen and what solved or what what happened at the end of that story to resolve it. Sometimes you might hear this as conflict resolution as well. So problem and solution describes a problem that arises, but then it offers a solution. So for example, my dog ran away. Yep, my dog has a tendency to run away. But as a result, my dad found him. So because one thing happened, my dog ran away, there had to be a solution to the end of this event. So as a result, my dad found him. So look for words for problem and solution are problem, issue, since, as a result, solution, idea, so, leads to, and causes. Friends, you are an expert on the five different types of text structures. Let's see what you can do today in your own reading.